Hey everybody. Today we're doing some chi-squared calculations in R. Chi-squared comes up all the time in inferential statistics. We use it for goodness of fit testing, hypothesis testing involving variance, among many other applications. Chi-squared is a continuous random variable. It's skewed to the right, its expected value is R, and its variance is 2R. In most applications, R is going to be a positive integer, but it does not necessarily have to be an integer at all. As R increases, the PDF, the probability density function of chi squared of R, shifts to the right and increasingly resembles a bell curve by the central limit theorem. The parameter R is called the number of degrees of freedom of that chi squared distribution. Incidentally, notice that I'm using the words chi squared to mean two different things here both the random variable itself and its distribution. Context will always make it clear which one is being discussed. In R, there are four basic functions for calculating in chi-squared distributions. First of all, R chi-squared, R-C-H-I-S-Q. This is going to generate n random values from the chi-squared distribution with R degrees of freedom. For instance, R chi-squared of 16 comma 5 generates 16 random values from chi squared of 5. p chi squared is the cumulative distribution function for the chi squared distribution with r degrees of freedom. It returns the probability of randomly getting a value in that distribution less than or equal to the x value, x value that you input. So, for example, p chi squared of 8 comma 5 gives back the probability of randomly getting a value less than or equal to 8 in chi-squared of 5. It's represented by this shaded area, and the value is about 0.844. Third, q chi-squared. That's the inverse CDF for the chi-squared distribution with r degrees of freedom. It returns the x value for which p chi-squared of x comma r is equal to p, where p is a cumulative probability or percentile. For instance, if we wanted to find the 50th percentile, the median, of chi squared of 12, we would use the command q chi squared of 0.5 comma 12. The first argument is the percentage that we're interested in, and the second is the number of degrees of freedom. So this really is just reversing the process of p chi squared, and the second line here is verifying that. I take the x value that I got out of the q chi squared command in the previous line, put it in as my input here, and the output is about 0.5. Finally, d chi squared of x comma r gives the value of the probability density function, or PDF, of chi squared of r at x. Now, the PDF is of great theoretical importance, but when we're using r, we're doing numerical calculations, and so p chi squared, I'm sorry, d chi squared, is less useful or interesting to us. All right, let's do a few actual problems. First of all, let's compute the probability of randomly getting an x value between 12 and 18 in chi squared of 15. So here we are in R. I've pulled up the help file for the chi squared distribution using the command question mark p chi squared. Here on the right, you can see we've got a quick rundown of all four of the major chi squared functions in R. Um, so if you forget any of the parameters, you can always just glance at this. Or, if you need to do something a little more sophisticated than like what I'm describing here, for example, using a non-central non chi-squared distribution. So the first problem that we need to solve is to find the probability of randomly getting an x value between 12 and 18 in the chi-squared distribution with 15 degrees of freedom. So this is a p chi-squared problem, p-c-h-i-s-q. In order to get the probability that x is between 12 and 18 in this chi-squared distribution, I want to take the probability of randomly getting an x value less than 18. Again, we're in a chi-squared distribution with 15 degrees of freedom. And then subtract off the probability of randomly getting a value that's less than 12, with again, 15 degrees of freedom. In this case, 0.4163. Problem two. Suppose there's an 80% chance that a random draw from chi squared of 20 is greater than x. Find x. This is going to be a q chi squared problem, 
we're being given a probability or percentile, and we want to get back an X value, so inverse CDF. Now, one thing to watch out for is that in this case, we're given the probability that lies to the right of a specific value. And of course, an inverse CDF is going to take into account a probability that lies to the left. So we're going to need to use 0.2 for our probability rather than 0.8. Back to R. So the command is Q chi squared. In this case, the percentile we're interested in is 20% or 0.2. And of course, we're in a distribution with 20 degrees of freedom. So in this case, the X value of interest is 14.57844. 80% of the probability in the distribution chi squared of 20 is going to lie to the right of that x value. Problem 3. Simulate 10,000 draws from the distribution chi squared of 4. Generate a histogram of the results. So when we're generating random values in the chi squared distribution, the command is r chi squared. First, we feed it the number of random, um, random trials we'd like to run in this case 10,000, and then the number of degrees of freedom. So let's assign this to a variable, maybe let's just call it x. Okay, and then in the environment you can see that I have a vector of length 10,000. Let's get a histogram for this. Let's try and make it slightly attractive, so we'll use tidyverse. In particular we'll use the ggplot2 package here. Um, if you don't have Tidyverse installed on your machine, I strongly recommend doing that uh, immediately. Install.packages, parenthesis, Tidyverse, parenthesis, quote, Tidyverse. Um, graphics just look a lot better that way. Here, since I just have a single variable that I want to graph, I'm going to use the quick plot function, qplot, x. Let's uh, explicitly specify that we want a histogram. And let's um, get a little bit of a uh, distinction between the boundaries in our bins. So how about call equals I parenthesis quote black. This should give us a reasonable looking plot right off the bat. There it is. This uh, clearly has the general shape of the chi-squared distributions that we saw earlier in this, in this talk.